In Soviet Estonia, calls for independence broadcast on local television. You want me to join you on my knees, but I don't want to do this. I want to remain myself, and our people want to be themselves. In Warsaw, a live television debate between Lech Wałęsa of the Solidarity Union and a Communist Party official. Something is happening behind the Iron Curtain, but with what impact and how long will it last? Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. Our focus tonight, television in the communist world. Is it taking on a new role? Our guests, a solidarity spokesman from Warsaw, Soviet commentator Vladimir Pozna, and an American scholar who specializes in studying Soviet bloc TV. This is ABC News Nightline, reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. In comparable terms, which is to say in the context of television, it was right up there with Roots, the Super Bowl, and the U.S. presidential debates. When Lech Wałęsa confronted the leader of Poland's communist trade union movement on live television tonight, 17 million Poles out of a population of 38 million were watching. It was the biggest audience ever for an event on Polish television. The reason isn't difficult to fathom. It was a very different kind of television fair in what is normally a painfully one-sided society. But as Don Kladstrup tells us, it wasn't the first sign that in the communist world, the part that's being played by television may be changing. Talk about suspense. 17 million Poles, nearly half the country's population, glued to their TVs, watching as Lech Wałęsa, leader of the outlawed Solidarity Trade Union, debated live on national television Alfred Miodowicz, a member of the country's ruling Politburo. Pleading for government recognition of solidarity, Wałęsa warned time is running out, that the drive for greater freedom must begin now. This Stalinist system cannot be sustained. What do we learn from modern technology? We need variety, the best solutions, the most accurate decisions, variation. Mr. Vowensa, you can see that we're going in that direction, despite the lack of pluralism. But sir, but sir, you're going step by step on foot, when the world is driving in cars. If you keep going like that, we'll have results in two or three hundred years. But we're going to get into that car. Not in our time, not at that speed. We can speed up. Poland is capable of going faster. Exactly. That's what's needed. But together, together. But if you have a monopoly and I don't have a right to live, excuse me, then I'm not taking part because you don't give me the right to take part. And I'm giving you the right. I want you to be strong. You want me to come to you on my knees. I don't want to do that. I want to be myself. And that's true of our people. They want to be themselves. The debate itself was unprecedented and represented the first appearance of Wałęsa on Polish TV since 1983. The question is, why? A new openness? Why would authorities allow someone they recently considered to be a non-person appear live on national TV? Because, well, it's like breaking... Um rules, I wouldn't say rules, but well, the present day practice for the first time. So everybody is expecting a lot out of it. The once supporters claimed victory after the debate and cheered following what officials said was the most watched event in the nation's history. While questions about the future of solidarity remain, one thing is clear. Rules are being changed, if not broken in terms of television programming and reporting not just in Poland, but throughout the Eastern Bloc. In Yugoslavia, for instance, whose population has the greatest ethnic diversity in Eastern Europe, where rivalries between Serbs and Albanians have flared. In the Soviet republics of Armenia and Azerbaijan, where political differences have provoked massive demonstrations and scores of deaths. In the Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, where people are taking Soviet leader Gorbachev at his word and speaking out, demanding more freedom and greater independence from Moscow. Though Mr. Gorbachev has made it emphatically clear things may be going too far, the bottom line is that people, especially in the Baltics, are seeing things on their television screens that they never saw before. We would try to cover the material more adequately, what really is going on. We're not broadcasting them as things in the state we want them to be. 
but in the states in, uh, in which they actually are. But that's Estonian TV. Few of these pictures have ever been shown nationally on Vremia, the government network. In the Baltic states, the situation is tricky. Again, it has to do with the visibility of, of that little region in the world arena and with the fact that the Soviets really need the economy of the Baltic states to keep them going. So they're treating it much nicer. So riots are benignly referred to as troubles or ignored altogether. Mass protests are dismissed as minor disturbances involving a few hooligans. Earlier this month, as television watchers in the Baltics were seeing these pictures, viewers in the rest of the country were looking at film that was one year old because authorities in Moscow decided slogans on certain banners were not fit to broadcast. It's a feeling of being afraid of something. A feeling uh, uh, of being afraid of everything new, of everything that you have not um, get used to. Not that Vremya or Soviet Central Television hasn't shown something being wrong. It has, as evidenced by this scene of Mr. Gorbachev being heckled by angry workers. Okay, comrades, I understand your complaints, what you're driving at. But in Armenia, where some of the worst violence has taken place, Vremya is now being called Vrenyal, which means lie. What kind of lie? Well, here's what happened as angry crowds clashed over whether the autonomous district of Nagorno-Karabakh should be returned to Armenia. But what did viewers around the rest of the country see? A travel documentary portraying the region as a paradise of culture, creativity, and contentment. We've climbed these Armenian mountains to touch with our own hands the clouds. It's nonsense, of course. Uh, we were uh, even laughing in Tallinn when we sh saw this Vremia news program from, from Moscow. And we saw that uh, Armenians and Azerbaijanis were working together and they were very happy. We, know, we knew at once some, something is going on there again. But in a longer view, interpreting TV images in the Soviet bloc is never easy. Was Lech Wałęsa's appearance on Polish TV tonight a sign of new openness? Or was it, as some think, subtle manipulation by authorities? It is an attempt to, just to prove that things are going the uh, right way, that something is changing, that uh, the promises of change are really respected, and that now, uh, please, uh, all people would be good guys and work as we are, uh, you are asked to do. There are those who would consider that a happy ending, but far more worry how it will really end. Does the promise of perestroika represent a permanent flowering? Or is it, as many fear, just another Prague spring doomed to wither? This is Don Cladstrup for Nightline. When we come back, we'll be joined by Soviet commentator Vladimir Posner and by Janusz Onyshkevich, national spokesman for the Solidarity Union in Poland. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Acura. When you race Formula One cars at speeds exceeding 200 miles an hour, you're bound to gain a great deal of valuable information about engine technology. You might expect us to keep information like that under lock and key. But we prefer to keep it someplace a little more accessible. The Acura Integra Sports Sedan. Every year I say I'm going to do something about next year's taxes. And every year I don't. Well, I finally did it. And I feel great. I invested in Naveen. Naveen income is free of federal tax. With Naveen, I keep what I earn. So while you can do something about next year's taxes, call Naveen today. It's not what you earn. It's what you keep. For information on Nuveen tax-free investments, call your broker or financial advisor or 800-524-6500. Friday only, 10 to 10 only, it's the Circuit City 12 hours sales. Friday only, time counts down with savings in every department. 
like this sharp 13-inch color TV, now a low $149.97. And this AT&T compact digital phone answering device, just $59.97. Hurry, Friday only, time flies. Bus Circuit City, 12 hours sale, Friday only, 10 to 10 only. The Gentleman's Gift Sale at Kastner Knott. Brands he appreciates at prices you'll love. Colorful Janssen sweaters. Practical Aris Isotoner gloves. Hager and Palm Beach suits. It's all on sale. Totes for inclement weather. Quality Agner shirts and Jamar slacks. He'll be impressed. Special clothes for the big and tall men on your list. For casual wear, Levi's and Levi Dockers can't be beat. The Gentleman's Gift Sale at Kastner Knott. Tomorrow on the American Agenda, shocking evidence. The Army bought these vehicles for billions, knowing some were dangerously defective. Watch ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Vladimir Posner, who is with us now from our Chicago bureau, has frequently presented the Soviet point of view on American television, from the Brezhnev to the Gorbachev regimes. Mr. Posner broadcasts on Soviet television and radio and is presently host of Sunday Evening with Vladimir Posner, the first Soviet talk show. He is presently on a visit to the United States. Janusz Onishkevich, who joins us from Warsaw, is the official national press spokesman for the Solidarity Union, as well as being a senior lecturer at Warsaw University. Give us a quick fill-in, if you would, of the impact, as you see it, of today's extraordinary debate. Would you, Mr. Yanushkovich? I think that first of all, one should say what was the purpose of this, of this debate uh, from the point of view of the authorities and from our point of view. It looks to us that authorities and Mr. Mudovic, the head of the official trade unions, uh, wanted to destroy the myth of Lech Valencia. They wanted to show him as somebody rather simple, as kind of a clown, a parrot, uh, a person who say one second one thing, then say something else, uh, who is not as a uh, genuine leader. Uh, and by this uh, action, they wanted more or less to substitute Mr. Mjodovic as somebody uh, who is seen as a person people in Poland should identify with. Uh, that failed completely. I think Valenza proved once more that he is a genuine popular leader with charisma. He was very convincing. He spoke very openly using quite a different language than Mr. Mjodovic, the head of the official trade unions and also the member of Politburo of Polish Communist Party. Let me, uh, I think... Let me interrupt you only for one moment because the, the thrust of our program tonight is to try to get a sense of what impact the media and the new way that media seems to be being used in the Eastern Bloc now, what impact that is having. So let me ask you in that sense, there was a huge audience tonight, a huge television audience, I'm told. I, I, I mean, I gather some pre-broadcast estimates were that as many as 60% of the adult population would be watching this debate. Seeing it on television, what particular impact do you think that had? I think it will have a big impact. First of all, it will more or less destroy this propaganda presenting Valencia as somebody simple and rather silly. The second thing, from our point of view, more important is rather positive. It means Valencia will get across with his message to people who lost the contact with solidarity, who have no contact with our underground press, with Western uh, broadcastings. Uh, so it will sort of throw them out of their apathy. We simply think that this debate will help tremendously to build again the position solidarity should have. Quick question, and if you would, quick answer. If indeed the purpose of the Polish government was to use this as a means of, as you suggest, discrediting Lech Wałęsa, and if the impact, as you assess it, is exactly the opposite, will this be the first and last time that this kind of thing happens? It might be so. Vladimir Posner, put this into the larger context of what seems to be happening now in, in what, for simplicity's sake, I'll refer to as the Soviet bloc. Is, for example, what happened in Poland this evening, this debate. Uh, is that a natural consequence of the policy of perestroika, the policy of glasnost? 
Well, I don't think it is happening in what you call the Soviet bloc, and therefore I can't say that it's a logical consequence. Some of the socialist countries of Eastern Europe seem to be very much for perestroika. Some seem to be very much against it. And I don't think you can make a uniform answer to that. So well, my, my, yeah. again, specifically what I'm referring to is what appears to be uh, an opening in the media. We are seeing more media coverage in Yugoslavia. We're seeing more media coverage in Poland. We're seeing, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the Soviet Union in a moment. I don't know, for example, whether it's happening in Romania, Bulgaria, East Germany. Exactly, right. And, so and we're, we're seeing it, as you say, in Yugoslavia, but I think we've been seeing it in Yugoslavia for a long time. Um, I'm not a judge on Poland, and I can't say whether... So definitely this debate is, is news for Poland, but I think that it's been a relatively... Uh, open media, I say relatively, but a lot of other socialist countries uh, have not gone that way at all. So to say that what we're seeing is a result of the way the media have changed in the Soviet Union, uh, I think is premature. Well, I'm seeing, I'm looking at the at the media, and I'm a little worried about losing our satellite to Warsaw. So let me throw the the question to Mr. Yanushkevich. Uh, I'm looking at what's happening in the media as being, in some sense, a symptom or a symbol of what is happening throughout what we refer to as the Eastern Bloc. Do you agree with that? Well, I would agree, but I would not rather be happy of seeing Polish situation being repeated in other places. In Poland, we have a lot of talks, but very little action. What we need is not just empty debate, a lot of hot air. We need some political movements, political openings. No, you're, you're not referring to what happened earlier this evening uh, as empty debate. I mean, that is a significant event, is it not, that this thing can happen live in the full sight of the Polish people? It is an event, but what we really need is kind of new legal situation, new institutions, changing in the system of our institutions of our public life, and that's something we are still waiting for. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be joined in our discussion by an American student of television in the Communist bloc who has also been a direct participant in Soviet TV, Ilona Klup of Columbia University's Harriman Institute for the Advanced Study of the Soviet Union. Here are three popular ways to drive a screw. We can only take credit for two of them. The Skill Twist and the New Skills Super Twist, part of the complete line of cordless power tools from Skill at hardware stores and home centers. After you've produced the yearly report in record time and made color part of your winning proposal, you'll know why Canon is the most popular copier in America. From personal to color laser copying, the choice is Canon. Up to $1,000 cash back on a Subaru is worth more because Subaru has the best-selling import wagon in America. Because the Subaru Justy is the lowest-priced four-wheel drive passenger car in America. Up to $1,000 cash back from Subaru means a great deal on a great car. Explore Wilson County, the best of two worlds. If you care, we care about you and your success. At Cumberland University, you can study for a business career, prepare to be a teacher, major in liberal arts, or get a master's degree in education. Cumberland provides the best of two worlds by being small enough to let you be an individual, yet large enough to give you a complete education. Explore Wilson County was brought to you by Cunningham Motors in Lebanon. A lot of folks still think buying a new car is a gamble. But those who've come to Cunningham Motors know that they always deal your way. Cunningham takes all the risk out and puts you in the car or truck you need at a price you can afford. When you want a new Pontiac, Chrysler, Plymouth, or great GMC truck, come to Cunningham, where a good deal is never a gamble. You can count on Cunningham. Count on Cunningham. Highway 70 West in Lebanon.
It's C.E. Hardeman Appliance Santa Saver Sale, and now's the time when you'll save big on GE Home Appliances. Just look at this Santa Saver. GE's Deluxe 17.7 No Frost Refrigerator, Santa Saver priced only $4.98, or GE's 5-Cycle Undercounter Dishwasher at only $2.48. And it's your choice on this GE 30-inch range or heavy-duty large-capacity washer at only $2.98. Now at C.E. Hardeman Appliance, 1248 South Gallatin Road in Madison. America's worst enemy may be our own weapons. So on some of those missiles, they're not sure whether they'll hit Washington or Moscow. The business of defense flaws in the shield Thursday. Tomorrow, the latest word from NASA on the shuttle launch. Plus, golden girl B. Arthur, she's starring in a new TV movie. And Paul Simon tomorrow on Good Morning America. Ilona Klupt is a graduate student at the Harriman Institute at Columbia University who spent two years as director of the Institute's working group on Soviet television, which monitors Soviet broadcasts. Since last spring, she's been part of a team of Columbia University students, which travels to Moscow periodically to take part in an international student TV game show called What, When, and Where. Ms. Klupt, who joins us in our New York studios, is writing a thesis on the socialization of children through Soviet TV put that aside for a moment and talk to us uh, about the the symbolism that I was talking about a moment ago to what degree should we derive any encouragement from what seems to be uh, a liberalization of television radio the media in general not only in the Soviet Union but in some of the Eastern Bloc nations well you can certainly talk about some liberalization in television and in media in general in the Eastern Bloc uh, however, we, can, we should proceed with caution when we say liberalization because the coverage of the events in Poland and in Yugoslavia have followed very different paths and for very good reasons. For instance, Poland was covered earlier in, for instance, in July when the uprisings in Gdansk just began as workers rioting, workers being a saboteurs, workers being provocateurs, showing very low socialist consciousness which in Soviet jargon means someone expressing an anti-socialist opinion about their government and the state. Ms. Klup, let me interrupt you for a moment. Yes. Are you reading from notes or something? No, or? I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, just, just look in this direction if you sure. would. Uh, part of what I'm uh, mm -hmm. tremendously interested in right now mm -hmm. is the differing television coverage within the Soviet Union itself. For example, in some of the Baltic states, regional right. television there is showing one thing, national television back in uh, you know from moscow is showing something else again talk about that for a moment all okay. right what happens in the baltic states is very interesting um regional television in the baltic states is right now under a very heavy influence of what is called the national front the national front is groups in uh, both lithuania estonia and um, latvia of people who are very much in support of separatism from the soviet government they have expressed very strong opinions about separate economic, social, and political expression of the Baltics. Their television expresses the same opinion. Soviet coverage of these events, however, is quite different. The national fronts are not being called national fronts, but are being called fronts of liberalization and perestroika. And that's quite interesting, let because me talk they're to, not. Let me talk to Vladimir Posner for a moment about that. Vladimir, to what degree, then, are we going to continue to see that dichotomy, or are those regional television programs going to have to be brought into line eventually with what national television is showing? Well, definitely, I would like to see that difference exist. I think that people should have a choice of watching their own local television and national television, and there should be differences of opinion. And I think that's a very healthy thing. What is happening today on national or rather regional television in the Baltics, in my opinion, in some cases, is not too healthy because um, it, it sometimes is extremist and sometimes is even chauvinistic. And I think that's always danger, regardless of the reasons for it. But I would think that a difference in broadcast is healthy. And I have to say that uh, on Soviet television, we call the National Front the National Front. Uh, we do not call it something different. Why do you think it is, Vladimir, and if you could give me a relatively quick answer on this, yeah. I'd be grateful. Why do you think it is that much of what is being shown, for example, in Estonia, is not being shown? There is a much reduced version, a much edited version of what's being shown on that television 
uh, that is being shown on national TV out of Moscow? First of all, everything that's being shown on national television in Estonia is in Estonian. It's not in Russian. And it's being shown from a purely Estonian viewpoint. National television is giving bits of that and giving a different viewpoint. I think there's a clear reason for it, which doesn't even have to be explained. All right. We'll, uh, we'll come back to it, and maybe you'll explain a little more of it anyway when we continue our discussion in a moment. Oh, look at me back in the 60s, working up a sweat. Oh, and that's how I used to pump iron. Not today. Today we're exercising more and eating less red meat. But red meat is a great source of iron. Only Kellogg's Bran Flakes has high fiber and 100% of the iron recommended today. Mm. So now I pump a little iron outside and inside. You know, I haven't felt this good since I burned that bathing suit. Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Gifts with scotch tape. A four-roll pack is just one forty-four, and Fisker's scissors. This two-piece gift box set is just six eighty-eight. Hey, lots of good stuff here, all over. You can't miss it. Hey, let me tell you, Ace is a place for me. For all of life's celebrations. In all of love's languages, only a diamond says forever. There's one place you'll find this Craftsman cordless drill for only $26.99 on sale. And all these other cordless gifts on sale, they're America's first choice in tools. Craftsman, only at Sears. I'll go look at the stereos. I could have bought a better TV. Oh, come on, dear. We came to see a stereo. I could have bought a better TV. Well, the department store didn't have that one. I could have bought a better TV. For less. For less! Should have gone to Circuit City. With Circuit City's vast selection of brand name audio, video, and appliances, and guaranteed low prices, you'll never be sorry. Could have bought a better TV. Finally, there's an intelligent choice. Circuit City. Continuing our discussion now with Vladimir Posner and Ilona Klup. Uh, Ms. Klup, do you accept what Vladimir Posner was saying before, that the, uh, the, the, the reason there is such an abbreviated, edited version of what's going on in Estonia, for example, is simply A, the one is in the Estonian language, and, and uh, I'm not quite sure what the B was, but good ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I cannot say that I can agree with that fully, because despite the fact that Estonian broadcasting is in Estonian, when the Russian version of the broadcasting comes in, it is, simply portrays a very different picture. The National Front in Estonia is asking for greater liberalization from the Soviet domination in education, in literature, in politics, and in economics. When the same thing is being portrayed in Soviet television as simply a call for greater freedom and perestroika and de democratization of society, basically coined phrases used in Soviet television and media today, anyway, um, it's, a, it's a very different picture. Vladimir? It shows a very different picture. No, that's not true. Uh, point number one, um, what is being said about Estonia on Soviet television, and I say Soviet meaning central television, is that in Estonia there is a desire almost to cede from the Soviet Union, to be utterly independent, and in fact that a decision has been passed by the, Soviet, by the uh, Supreme Soviet of Estonia that contradicts the Soviet Constitution. No one is hiding the fact that in Estonia there is a strong movement to totally be free of any kind of influence from Moscow. Incidentally, Estonia is also Soviet. So when you say Estonians want to be free from Soviet, you're actually making a mistake. What they want to be free from is central government based in Moscow. Although and that is I, being, that's I, being said clearly on Soviet television. I assume there is still, in, in some of those Baltic states, a truly nationalistic movement that is driving Absolutely. some of this. Absolutely. There is a very nationalistic movement, and even in some points a chauvinistic movement. And it's very much there, and it's not being hidden. All right. I thank all of you very much for joining us. In the interim, we have lost our, our uh, satellite feed to uh, Warsaw, so I'm not able to uh, thank Mr. Yanushkovich directly, but my thanks to Alina Klub and uh, also to Vladimir Posner. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline.
This has been a presentation of ABC News, where more Americans get their news than from any other source.